Americans consume roughly 250 more calories every day than they did in the 70s, and half those calories come from sugary drinks, which is why some health advocates are urging Congress to help pay for health care reform with a tax on non-diet sodas. We're not saying that calories from sugar beverages are different from any other calories, there are just too many of them. A 10 cent tax per can could yield $140 billion in revenues over 10 years, but the beverage industry is pushing back. This is no time for Congress to be adding taxes on the simple pleasures we all enjoy, like juice drinks and soda. There are several proposals for tackling obesity buried in the health care reform bills, such as requiring calorie labeling on chain restaurant menus, removing high copays for nutrition counseling, and allowing larger insurance premium discounts for employees who participate in wellness programs at work. I think you'll see significant steps to encourage wellness and prevention. But the president's plan was dealt another blow this weekend when one of his major of proposals... Action, ...independent group of doctors and medical experts who are empowered to eliminate waste and inefficiency in Medicare. ...failed to pass financial muster with the Congressional Budget Office. It said such an independent panel would save little money. Still, the White House contends it has reached agreement with Congress on 80 percent of the reform package. There's no doubt that uh, the 20% 20, 20 to go is not going to be necessarily easy, and it, it never has been. So far, the soft drink tax idea has gotten little traction here on Capitol Hill. It might raise a lot of money, but some reformers worry that it will unfairly burden lower and middle class Americans. Katie. Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill tonight. Thank you, Nancy. For more about the physical and financial costs of our expanding waistlines, you can go to our partner in health coverage, webmd.com, and search obesity.